Hello, everybody. Tim Hughes here. I'm the uh, uh, CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. Uh, with me today is Rosanna Watts, and we're going to talk about travel. Um, travel in a post-pandemic world. And um, um, so I, my, my business partner is actually um, on a flight to Munich as we speak. That's, oh. that's, he hasn't traveled in two and a half years so on, on a plane. So that's how. Anyway, before we get into that, Rosanna, where can people find you? Um, well, you can find me on Twitter, on um, Instagram, on um, uh, LinkedIn. Um, it, I'm Rosanna. My handle will be Rosanna Wyatt, uh, R-O-S-S-A-N-A-W-Y-A-T-T, -S -S -A -A wherever on most social platforms. Um, my uh, Facebook page. Twitter you as well, because you're a spaces person, aren't you? Yes, um, most a lot of Twitter. Um, I do. Uh, I I haven't been the last month only because there are a lot of other things going on. But uh, um, I I have done spaces. I was one of the actual uh, beta testers at the beginning when before it actually launched. So yeah, I love spaces. So we can talk about spaces all, a lot because I I really I quite enjoy it. So um so so let's talk about let's talk about travel. Um, because I've actually done a bit of travel in the last two years in bits and pieces mm -hmm. through various um i'm a i'm a i'm a, i love travel it's 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 one of the things it's a, it, it's a it's a passion of mine yeah and um it didn't matter how many how many covid <laughs> tests people threw at me or i had to hoops i had to jump through i was gonna go <laughs> good for you <laughs> um, so um um and and i'm a great believer is i'm a great believer in it you should have there should be things that you do every day so that it's I'm a great believer in, you know, you I, I get up at the same time and I do the same things because I then don't have to think about that. But I, but I also am a great believer is that you need to stop all that. And clear the head. Um, and we had a week in Tuscany just a week oh. ago and it was just, you know, a different place, different, <laughs> smells, different temperature, different language. Oh. And Tuscany, <laughs> it's, and it, it is, and it's just it's, it's different food. Well, I've not had this before. What's this taste like? Well, bleh, no. oh, what's this taste like? Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> and, and for me, so I'm and I'm rattling on, and it's just this is about you, but I mean, it, it's travel is just an amazing thing. But that's what it does. It it, it it makes you experience things that you haven't before, and even if you have before, it's just it's it's just because you don't do it on a regular basis it's not a routine as you said it's it's off it's far from what is normal i mean traveling to different countries and that's the whole point of travel is that you get to experience and learn new things um and we get away from the normal um and uh it's just it, it takes us to a different place and and i think we all dream of of experiencing all these things whether it's food i mean it all kind of goes together the, the food and the travel and the wine and you know everything you know you so you enjoy it on a different level than you would if you were at home and it was being made at home and yes it does you know when you make certain things at home they do take you back to certain <coughs> excuse me certain destinations that you visited but it's a on a totally different level, so yeah, it travels. So, what, what, what was it? What's what? What? What's inspired you to go traveling in the first place? Because I know you. Because I know that you're a little over twenty five. So, uh, <laughs> a little, yeah. Uh, 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 you know what? 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 Why did you? What? What was it that 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 that? But you know, got that. I gotta go traveling. Well, I started um, way back when I was <laughs> in my teens. <laughs> So a long, long time ago, um, I actually used to work for my aunt in Toronto on, in the summers and she used to own a travel agency. So I would um, go in and, and I think that was just it, it, helping people plan their itineraries and things that sort of inspired me to want to travel and to learn more. And my aunt used to travel all over the place and, um, because that was part of what she did as a travel agent. And uh, so it just she'd come back with these stories and it just it was something that I always just wanted to do. So um I did that in my early, um, uh, like I said, my teenage years, uh, we, as a family, we traveled a lot. And then I did travel um, uh, just in my early 20s, uh, quite a bit to Italy. Um, and then it just seemed like I didn't, I mean, I traveled around here. I've traveled a fair bit through the States and Canada, but um, I hadn't really been back to Europe for quite a bit. So it's been probably about 
nine years since I've, I've, I returned to Europe and, and traveling. So yeah, um, it's, it's just, it's always been there. It's always, it's because it inspires us to want to um, learn more about the world, right? And the different cultures. So yes. It does, it does for me. I know, I know the first time I went to Vietnam and Cambodia, mm -hmm. um, there was a, the, the tour company had a reading list of all the books. I just went out and bought them on, and read them all. Oh, good. Uh, and, and and you know because it was about it it was about all it you know it wasn't just about getting up in the morning because you're on a tour and you go oh, tell us what we're going to do today it was about you know this is what we're going to do okay well it, are we going to do we're going to do this bit and, <laughs> and, and, and I remember being in um, um, I used to know somebody who was a big horse rider and we went and stayed in a place in um, in Zambia. And um, they said the people said there's a there's a farmhouse there, and they said what do you want to do? And and um, basically they said they actually work out whether they want you to come. What they do is that if you say if when they say what do you want to do when you come here, what they will do is if you say something and it shows that you're interesting, they they will have spaces. If you say that oh I don't know, just tell us what we want to do. When, they say <laughs> oh we'll do it that week. Yeah, and, and it, it, that makes sense because you have to be wanting to immerse yourself into that culture as well right um and be willing to take you know go go get out of your comfort zone more than anything else um and i think that's one of the things that a lot of people aren't used to doing um and uh, some people when they travel they have a fixed um way of traveling or fixed thoughts on how to travel and that's you got to get a, get out of that because you're going to learn or you have to learn <laughs> when you're traveling you should that's the whole point of it um is learning and experiencing it um one of the big things like you said you went out and bought all those books research is really important before you get there so learn about the country that you're visiting the destination that you're visiting because it's so important whether it's you know the kind of foods that you might want to try whether it's the the, de the different attractions or or things that you want to visit um but also the culture of the people and and the norms and and, and what they're and because when you go to a destination, you have to respect the destination. It's yeah. like I think when we talked earlier, it's when you're visiting, if you're visiting someone's home, you are going to respect their home and you're going to respect, um, you know, their rules in a sense and, and what they, you know, what they like. So you're not just going to walk in and do whatever you want to do. So I think in the same way, we should be traveling you know, we should be traveling in the same way, but not everyone does, <laughs> sadly. Yeah, and I, I think that's really important. I mean, uh, you know, I when we went to, to Zambia and we went to this farmhouse, we actually said, is there anything that we can bring? And they said, yeah, bring a football. <laughs> um, because, because in that part of Zambia, they just didn't have or couldn't afford footballs. Yeah. And what happened was that um, um, word got out that this football was, and, 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 you know, they wanted to know. But the thing was, is that when we presented it to them, of course, we have first world views about things they didn't have a football they actually had made a football out of plastic and they uh, but the thing was that the, the ball that we took they couldn't use because they didn't have shoes oh and that was one of those first world things yeah. where you 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 of course you you're you're thinking from a oh yeah we just take a football yeah and, uh, that's and, and, and then when you fight you get there they actually play with this this ball made out of plastic bags which they can use with bare feet and you just don't think about those things and i think that's really important about the way that we um well, we're never going to get it we're never going to get it 100 percent right but 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 trying to understand the impact that we're going to have on the environment when we get there and that's a big thing and that's i think um, becoming more of um you know the sustainable travel and things like that because we're all looking at different ways of traveling um, and I think some of us have the pandemic has sort of made some of us sit back and hopefully <laughs> and take take a better look at how we do things um, so that that then translates into the way we travel and how we you know how we leave the destination that we've gone to visit because that's really important that impact um, you know and we saw even during you know the first little while of the pandemic how different areas cleared up, you know, Venice and just, it just, it, and how some of the wildlife sort of started to, you know, grow, to, to increase a little bit in certain areas because um, they, they didn't have us <laughs> impacting it in a, a negative way. So um, it's, it is interesting to see. And, and it is nice to see that that it helped in some ways and hopefully 
we'll be able to continue it or um, certain changes will be made so that we can help our planet in, in certain well, ways. So what things do you think that we can do to, to um, because obviously we're going to have to fly there, so that has an impact, but, you know, uh, but what, what is it that we can do to, to try and, um, well, be more sustainable in travel. Yeah, definitely. Our carbon footprint is a big thing. Now, the other thing is you can look at um, different tour companies uh, will have um, the offsetting. So you try and do things like that will help in that way. Um, you can even look up um, when you're traveling um, to the different airlines and how many the different flights and whether or not, you know, one has decreased emissions or so you try and travel and that, so they may cost a little bit more to get that specific flight. But I mean, it's in the long run, it's better for everybody. So um, just little things like that, little things that can impact, make sure that whenever you're like, we talked about, you know, when you're going into a destination, make sure that you're leaving it as pristine as you went in before, because, you know, people, you know, are, we've gotten lazy. I mean, <laughs> people will just, will just eat something and then just drop it and walk away. And it just takes two seconds to just pick something up, take it with you, take it out. If there's no garbage, you know, around, just take it with you. Um, and that's a, that's a, just a tiny little thing that's so, so important. Um, also, try and take things like when you're going on a picnic i mean use you know for one thing always try and get the local go to the markets the markets you know wherever you go are so amazing visit them you know grab some food go for a picnic but that's the best thing um just you know to do that uh, and um when you're you're taking those things away don't you know use things that can be recycled i mean there's so many great options out there right now that we can use i mean you know the the re, um, usable um uh, wraps um wrappers and things like that little containers that you know i can when i travel i carry some of the the like the tupperware containers so that if i want oh, to make something idea. Yeah. And then that way I can rinse it out when I get back. I can wash it out when I get back to the hotel room and then fill it, you know, the next time I go. Because uh, being celiac, I also have to think about how the foods that I eat because I can't eat everything. So it's easier for me sometimes just to go and buy certain things at the, you know, whether it's the market or whatever, and then make them up so I can have something to eat while I'm traveling. So Yeah, I mean, that's a really good, it's a really good idea. And I think that um, there has to be a way that we um that we're able to give back but not in a um sometimes i think it's just too easy for for us as first world people to just, <laughs> um make decisions about things yeah. and i've been in situations <laughs> where I, I i remember when we we um i can't remember where we were it was in south america and, and we went into this, this village and they started asking for the, the children asked for pencils and 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 we said and I said why are they asking for pencil? And they said well to be honest, what happened was that one day they were they were kind of begging and one of the um, um, the tourists basically gave them a pencil and now that, that all they're doing is asking for pencils. <laughs> and there was this and and it was like it was this thing where you know we because people thought they were giving pencils because they didn't have any. Yeah. But actually what the person had done is that one of the things one of the things you have to be really careful about is about um, I was with a I, I remember being in Tibet um, and the person basically um, collected all the bread rolls that weren't eaten in the morning and went and basically fed them to the dogs in the temple. And the dogs went just ballistic because they're, they're normally starved. There's a there's a view in in Tibet that a temple dog is the lowest in in oh, um, re yeah. reincarnation um you, there's there's insects and you, you can be reincarnated the lowest of the lowest thing ever still the is dog a, is a temple dog wow. so so <laughs> that this person's feeding this this the, the, the lowest of the low and the and the local people are going why the, why is this person and it was like well she said well i just picked up all the food that wasn't that was going and now and, and it's like well yeah i know i know you were trying to help but <laughs> and that's one of the things that we, we 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 have to be so careful of about um how we help how we help yeah yeah because that's very important because we look at it from our point of view and not from their point of view and that's the other thing that we have to think about is their point of view and what is going to make um, it better for them not for us and even traveling i mean it's not about us and i think we've talked about this as well it's not just about us we also have to think about 
everybody else, and especially now, this if it's this well, we're still not completely over. Um, you know, you may be doubly vaxxed or have booster shots or everything else, but not all the countries that we're gonna or destinations that we're gonna be visiting will have that option because they don't have that accessibility. So we need to be careful um, when we're going in um, because it's not about us. It's about them as well and and because they won't be have the protections that we would have if we were to pass something along to them it would be a lot worse for them yes yeah so we need to and be it's, it's a bit like the old rabies thing which is um um you, you know just keep you just you just you know keep away from keep away from you have to be sensible and keep away from dogs. And then pat, yeah. pat them on you them. have to be very careful. And that's the thing is, I mean, you, when you travel. It's the same with COVID. You've got to be, you know, I know. So here in the UK, we don't have to wear masks anymore unless mm. I went to the dentist just then. They say, can you wear a mask? So you have to wear, but, but otherwise we don't have to wear them. But if you're going to a place where there isn't um, all around vaccination. Yeah. Going, going back to wearing a mask, I think is is, is sensible precaution. Yeah, and because it, it can be so devastating for them, and, and because they don't have those precautions of you know the, the the vaccinations to help protect them. So, and that's you know we're we're lucky. Um, you know we do have uh, vaccinations don't prevent you from getting it, obviously, but they do lessen that impact. So our viral load will be less for us, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be less for somebody that we pass it along to. So that we just need to be careful about that point. And um, so, so you talk about slow travel. What's what's that? And I'm just going to say hello to Jim for for. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Thanks for popping in. Um, well, um, more than anything else, it's just taking the time to actually thoroughly enjoy the destination that you're in. Um, I think for a, a long time there, people were um, doing the tours. So you do like <laughs> 11 countries in 10 days, which was, or, you know, th that whole, you know, that was what was marketed. You do all these countries, you get to visit all these countries and destinations and, 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 you know, you're only gone for like less than two weeks. And, uh, it was just so rushed. You didn't get to enjoy the destination. You didn't see anything. You couldn't because, I mean, how could you when you were, you know, basically taking the time to um, go from one place to the other so that you could get all these places in. Now, so now, you know, you pick one or two spots, stay for a while, get to know the locals, because that's the best thing is just to get, you know, talk to the locals, visit the local areas, lo the, the markets, um, the shops and things like that, so that you're putting money into the destination as well, putting it back into the economy, because they've suffered so many places have suffered right now, um, the tourism, <coughs> excuse me, um, because of the pandemic. So thoroughly enjoy um, the destination and then go back at some other point for, you know, to visit an, an, another area, but take the time to, even if you just um, uh, basically um, have a, a, a local area that you're going to be using as a, um, a, a starting point, um, then you can do like day trips or whatever, so that you at least have one central area that you're going to be in. And then that way, um, and you get to know the surrounding area, but not like you're traipsing all over the country. Because to me, that that just, it's a waste of time um, more than anything else, because all you're doing is spending the time traveling from one area to the other. Um, and you're not thoroughly enjoying where you are. And, and you know, bike and walk and do all those things that where you could actually see the area that you're in instead of, um, you know, being in, in a bus or, you know, driving in a car. I mean, getting from one, if you're going from like Rome to, to Florence in a train is wonderful, but you don't want to do that every day. You're not, you don't want to be doing that during every day. Um, so you take the time to really just sort of sit and, you know, um, use one point as a central um, spot and then just do like uh, day trips from that one area. And then that way you can thoroughly enjoy that whole region and learn more about it. I think that's, a, I think that's great advice because, I mean, it's, uh, um, even though I live in London, if I'm in London, I will generally walk. Because it's a for me it's a and it's it's whenever I've I've travelled through, um, for example, um, we we did did some work in Chicago, and and you know we could have could have Ubered to the place, but we didn't. We walked, <laughs> um, and it was freezing cold and pouring down with rain. <laughs> with, with Chicago, um, but you, got, you kind of you get the feel for the place, you know. 
Chicago and the buildings in Chicago because you miss a lot of that oh, when you're driving. Amazing. Oh, the, the architecture is incredible. And that's the thing when you're walking, whether it's cities or, or in the rural, rural setting, you miss so much when you're in a car or a bus. Um, and you have to, when you're walking, you get to thoroughly enjoy the landscape or whether it's an architectural landscape or just, you know, a pastoral landscape. It's, it's, it's just, a, it I, is. I remember being, um, I remember going on a, um, on a train journey in, um, in, in Myanmar. And um, and the, the travel company said we've we've got booked you first class tickets. And there was a little group of us who said we're not traveling first class. We're traveling. What's what, what do the locals do? Well, it's 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 third class. So well, we're going to travel third class. <laughs> and and you know we're gonna and what we want to do is that when the person comes on with the chickens, we're gonna try and talk. You know, with yeah. the, the chickens, we're gonna talk to them. And when the little and they people, do, <laughs> when people come in trying to sell different things and dr drinks and stuff and. And um, and you know we're gonna. Sm I, I might not taste them, but I might you know smell them and stuff like that because we want to experience what it's like. And that is what travel is about. It is just putting yourself in a position where you can experience as much as you can, but you're not going to change anything or cause a problem wherever you are. <laughs> and that's the thing is this is just you know because that's it, it. It gives us more, um, and it also doesn't hurt where you are. So. We were. I was with a guy who was. Um, he's an. He, he's retired now, but he's an ex Saracens rugby player. So he's six foot five, <laughs> and and he would just walk in. You know, he if he walks into a room, he has to um, bend down. <laughs> he'd walk in, and everybody would stop because he was just so tall. So tall. And 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 and, and, and it was just magnificent the way that. And and you just got conversations with people. You just go, and and it was amazing that. Um, cause in a lot of places, as you, you know, a lot of places, English is, is, is a second language. Mm -hmm. So it in, is anymore, yeah. you know, Myanmar, you, you, certainly the children, you know, if you, if you said, what's your favorite color, they would say, you know, you know, red or blue, they would know that sort of thing, but that's, that's a conversation that you can have with somebody and, 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 you know, you're starting to learn stuff, yeah. which for me is, you know, one of the reasons why I do these things is cause I learn stuff. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. And, it, and it's like, you know, like you said, you know, you have to um, really experience everything that you're, you know, when you're in a destination. And that's, you know, a lot of us, I think um, it's many people have had bucket lists, but I'm not sure if it's a bucket list because it's something that, that they were expected to do or something that they really wanted to do. And I'm hoping that as um, well, according to some of the stats, um, it, it seems like more people are really taking a look at um, where they're traveling and how they're traveling. So I'm hoping that, that th this has changed some people for the better in the way that they travel um, and that they are going to um, lessen their impact in, in, a, um, in terms of the damage that they cause when they're, they're going to a destination so that it will, the impact will be better um, in, in uh, sustainability in, in, in terms of sustainability. So, yeah. It is, it's, it's not an easy thing. And I mean, um, we all think about how we leave, we're going to leave this world for our children. And that's a big thing um, because, you know, there are, you know, the climate change, we feel it all the time. I mean, I, I it, this, this year has been horrible for um, the weather. Um, we were just talking about that earlier, how it's just starting to get nice. I mean, it's already the middle of May almost. Um, and we're, we're here, we're used to having better weather, um, nicer weather earlier. And it's taken this long to start to even get nice. We haven't hit 22 <laughs> yet degrees yet. So that's the point. I mean, it, the world is changing and we have to make sure that we're going to um, lessen the impact of, of what we do to make the, that change happen even faster. Because it's going to change. It's happening. It's and it. we have to do our part. We need yeah. to start to do our part because too many people say, oh, well, somebody else will take care of it. No, you have to take care of it. Because we, will have to, we all have a part. Yeah. Rosanna, yeah. It's, it's fascinating. Thank you so much for coming on and talking about oh, Thank you very much. Do you remind people where, where, where they can get hold of you? Um, well, I'm on Twitter and uh, Instagram, uh, Rosanna Wyatt. Um, and uh, on TikTok, and um, you can call find me on LinkedIn as well. Again, Rosanna Wyatt, and um, uh, my blog is Life is Full of Adventures. So you can lifeisfulladventures.com. Uh, you can go and take a look there. But yeah, 
Well, it's been thank uh, you so much for coming well, on and sharing you. your your insight, and especially I think it's something that we coming out of. I think you know the world's changed, and you know we need we now know that we need to do something, and we need to do something yes. different. And I and I and I think you know we're, we're, we're you're you're reminding us of that, and I think that's so true. Yeah, and we we really do have to think about that, and we have to remember. Like, like I keep going back to the whole visiting your, you know, um, going into somebody else's home, and what would yeah. you think of them coming to visit your home and how they treat your house, your home itself? So we have to think, keep that in mind. To me, that's the way that I think, and that's sorry, <laughs> my I'm Italian, <laughs> so you can see my hands going. But um, yeah, it is it is really important that we think about that, and it's a big thing. Uh, right, we just had a, um, we just had a, what's the most amazing future we can see? Then. Oops. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to have to try to, it's, uh, um, what is the point in time? I see into you, I change the light. Joel, you, you, you've, 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 it's all gone quiet now. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I, I think, I think um, I, there's another point here, which is um, respecting of each other. And I think that's really We do have to, yes. That's, that's important. And understanding, um, and a part of that is about research, because, you know, even if it's first world country like Italy, it's different. Yeah, and we do have to absolutely. Um, and even though you know we all want to get out there and travel, um, things do change quickly. I think um, I was just hearing that Italy is thinking about going back and doing some more masking. So as we evolve through this, they still, they still, pandemic, we, we had to wear masks in Tuscany a couple of weeks yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. So it's just um, everything's changing. You can't. What happened was going on. What they're doing today is not necessarily going to be what's going to happen tomorrow. So we do have to do the research on a daily basis. So um, you know that's the thing that you know whenever you're going to be traveling, you just can't get in, get in and get going. You have to research. That's very, very important. Um, and um, you know we do have to respect each other and respect not just um, the environment, but also the fact that we all have different different points of view. Um, we don't all see the pandemic in the same way, sadly, <laughs> but we do have to respect each other in that sense. And if someone is saying, please respect my space around me, you need to make sure that you do that. So anyway, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. It's been great talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank have you. a wonderful day.